So hi guys, welcome to another one of my videos. Let's talk that Davis, shall we? I want to pause it. First of all, let's get this stuff ready. I want to pause it that um, I think many critics, many critics of Devon Davis specifically have to come to terms with the reality of the situation. I'm not saying that you have to accept it. Okay, but you have to come to terms with it and understand that it is a reality of a particular group of people that runs contrary to what you would like to see happen. What you believe needs to be happening boxing. But I feel that just as cynical, just as cynical as uh, a lot of critics of Javante Davis, PBC and Floyd Mayweather are, of his intentions and plans understand that maybe to a certain degree the reason why Mayweather promotions especially and as a matter of fact Al Heyman run their business the way they do is based upon a certain level of cynicism and uh, a lack of trust in the criticism of their particular business ethos. What do I mean by that? I think that when you, when they, I, I think that many people, if you've been objective, you tend to feel, you do understand that there is a possibility of somebody could make the argument that unless Javonta Davis does something extraordinarily brave something Herculean of colossal magnitude that he will never get credit at the point we're at right now. And I'm not saying that he deserves credit at the moment, but I think we're at a certain impasse. We've sort of reached a, a, a point whereby Javonta Davis, you know what I'm saying, is the one that everybody wants to fight. And since he realizes, since he understands that a lot of people are thirsty to see to see him fight or to get in the ring with him for one reason or another, whether it's a, 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 a uh, Ryan Garcia or a, uh, uh, what's his name? Guy Russell Jr., Teofimo Lopez. I mean, what they sold with Leo Santa Cruz was Leo Santa Cruz called him out and he responded to the call. And Leo Santa Cruz, as a matter of fact, did say that he called out Javante Davis, and Javante Davis responded. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people, Javante Davis is about to go into this, this weird fight. First of all, let's start with this, Lewis and the Cruz. Lewis and the Cruz wants to maneuver in on uh, what's going on with, uh, with Valdez. So, as you know, there's murmurs that maybe the next fight of any great consequence and I'm not saying it's going to be the immediate next fight for Oscar Valdez, but the next fight of great consequence, of relevance for Oscar Valdez, might be a fight with Shakur Stevenson. Now, this is very important to the point I want to make here. Then suddenly, Leo Santa Cruz maneuvers in, and you automatically feel that if you know anything about the way boxing business, the way they organize the business of boxing, there's a good chance that there are many people who probably support a fight with Leo Santa Cruz against Oscar Valdez as opposed to the more meaningful fight of Oscar Valdez fighting Shakur Stevenson where there is a true and genuine um, rivalry that can be, I suppose, fixed onto other things, but that comes secondary Whatever else is going to function there comes secondary to the uh, personalities and the skill on offer and the styles on offer, I should say. But that will get abrogated. And this is why I say the cynicism comes in and you can't necessarily go after Mayweather and PBC for what they do. Because when you have a situation like this, suddenly it becomes all oh, an all out Mexican affair. Just like Oscar Valdez versus Bitchelt. Alright? 
Now, here's what we really need to come to terms with. What we really need to come to terms with is this, is that the, the, the Mayweather Promotion Organization, PBC, and so on and so forth, are really abiding by a very simple urban adage, which is this, don't hate the player, hate the fucking game. Don't hate the player, hate the game. It's not Mayweather and Javonta Davis and Al Heyman. It's not their fault, okay? In all honesty, if we're being really honest and raw about it, it's not their fault that should this promotion of this fight, let, and let, let, let's have a look, let's see what I'm talking about here. You see there? Should the promotion of this fight get underway, Javonta Davis to uh, move to 140, to, to uh, face Mario Barros. Mario Barrios. Let, let's have a look at Mario Barrios. You know what? I should uh, open this. See what's going on here for a second. One second, yo. Let's see. One second. Ebony Bridges. There, you can have a look at her. Ebony Bridges. All right. So, sticking her finger. Away. So let's look at Mario Barrios because I have him here. Okay. The reason why I say okay you know what it's cynical they had it planned all along and this information like it's in the works is a lot of bullshit because Mario Barrows was on the undercard if you know how PBC functions Mario Barrios was on the undercard of um, Javante Davis's outing against Alexander Cruz where he fought that white guy by the name of Ryan Carr and this is it right here you know what I mean that's it right there okay uh, I think I'll find that's him right there. Mario Barrow set to face Javante Davis. Oh, so, sorry, set for the Davis Santa Cruz pay per view co feature. He, they made him, they make it seem like he was a co feature. So they had it planned all along that he was a co feature on that on that card. Nobody talked about Mario Barrios, but they were selling it. And to be honest with you, I heard more about the white kid than I heard about Mario Barrios. Okay. But they sold it as a PVC co-feature. Did anybody believe that was a co-feature? Did anybody believe that that was a, a, a co-feature? That, okay, you know, Mario Barrows was co-featuring with Javonta Davis on that card. They had it planned all along that he was going to be sort of the co-feature, not the under, but undercard, really, of Javonta Davis, who was going to win his fight against the, the white kid. Okay? Going to beat him up. What's he say here? It says, uh, we've watched my fights with against Bater Amadov or whatever. Anyway, listen. Whatever that was. Anyway, look. So, they had him on the undercard against Leo Santa Cruz. Oh, sorry, for the Leo Santa Cruz Javante Davis. But they called it a co-feature. Which means they had it planned all along that they were eventually going to come together. And apparently, if you read... One second. Oops. What's this say? Uh, let's keep that there for a second. That's me with the promotions. Alright, let's leave that there for a second. Alright, um, if you read uh let me, let me dig that out. What I was what I was showing you initially. Okay. We're gonna find that. Alright. So so here we have a guy called Oops. Here we have a guy. I hope you can see it. Let's turn it this way. Can I see that? Let's turn it this way. It'll be small, but okay, so there you have it. It says uh Javonta Davis Barrios isn't exactly a fight I needed to see, but I think it will be exciting because Barrios is flawed but powerful and a big draw in San Antonio. So they knew that he was going to be a big draw in San Antonio. Why is Mario Barrios, to be honest with you, a person who doesn't necessarily cross over, a big draw in San Antonio? And why are they taking advantage of a fight in Texas again? Because it's not the Mayweather's fault that it so happens that Mexicans can't help themselves and they will just back anybody Mexican 
and pay for the fight. And somebody has to exploit it. Somebody has to take advantage of it. And they know how to do it. So if there's money to be made there, the boxing fan can, you know, they can complain to their blue in the face. The truth is, there's a bunch of Mexicans out there who, in all honesty, we call it patriotism, we call it uh, whatever the fuck, but it's true. We, what it really is, true is boxing racism, really, or, or the racialists, La Raza S, the La Raza is, and they're gonna go and, and pay for anybody Mexican who's fighting a black guy, because you know he Mexican. We back in the Mexican, bro. So you know they're gonna they're gonna back the Mexican, and you can't blame anybody who decides to take advantage of that. Fluffs up some narrative behind it and they go for it but you know it's been in the works since god knows when and that's what they're doing that's more or less what they're doing so uh hey good luck to him what else to say here yeah, yeah that's just oh yeah and somebody else, some other people have pointed out like Devonta davis was actually saying if he did go to 140 that he was going to go after josh taylor and then josh taylor said that's the biggest that's the best joke i've heard in a while what a minge. Anyway, it is what it is. So, uh, there you have it, man. I, I, I can't be too mad at them. I can't be too... Some people want to be mad. Oh, yo, yeah. Absolute disgrace. Whatever. Not me. Because until Me Mexicans stop paying through the nose for anybody who's Mexican... What can you, somebody's got to take advantage of it and that's what they're doing and we've got to come to terms with the fact that Mayweather and them just don't give a fuck they don't care what you think about them they're going to create their own narrative they're going to define it as a secret and there's going to be a whole bunch of people I mean they're, they're not that many but a few people who got to say yeah it's the truth man Javante Davis he's taking on big competition and shit. No, it is what it is <laughs> I know everybody does it anyway I mean look when people make that comparison, one second, yeah. Let, let's turn this down for a second. Yeah. Let's turn this down a little bit. That's Tony Jeffries of the oh, match room did <laughs> the Josh, uh, Josh Kelly Dirty thing. But anyway, should we continue watching that? Let's continue watching that. But anyway, um, yeah. I'll turn that down a bit. Should be on your toes. Should be flat footed. So, yeah, um, here's the thing. Here's the thing. They, uh, Mayweather and them are very cynical about boxing and boxing fans and the industry of boxing, and they want to make as much money as possible, and they know a surefire way to make it. The boxing fans are cynical of the Mayweather plan and the PVC plan and so on and so forth. But in all honesty, the fundamental change has to come from both areas. It's not just the case where you put the onus and responsibility on one group of people and say that they have to make that change. You know what I'm saying? Because if they did a lot of the stuff that a lot of these other guys want, they st it still wouldn't be good enough. So they might as well just do what they believe works. And yes, what I was going to say is like, you know, this comparison that they make to Canelo Alvarez, in a way, it is legit. It is legit. And I'll tell you why. Because Canelo Alvarez, okay, when he went up and fought, when, when he went up and fought um, Rocky Fielding and got all that money for nothing, okay, when, it, when they paid him all that money for nothing, the truth is, let me turn that. When they paid him all that, when they paid him all that money for nothing, okay, the truth is, he also claimed to be a four-weight world champion at that time because he, that was his first incursion into 168. But not only that, the difference, the big difference, is that that was his debut on his own, and they were paying him over 30 million to fight Rocky Fielding. Okay, they were they were paying him over 30 million. Now you could say, well, you know, by that time Canelo had already fought Kovalev. Has he? Had he fought Kovalev by then? I can't remember. I can't even remember. Had he fought Kovalev? I don't know. But, you know, he fought Kovalev. He fought Daniel Jacobs. He fought Gennady Golovkin. You know what I'm saying? He, he had a record there. But they paid him about 30 million to fight Rocky Fielding and then call himself a champion at 168 for a regular belt. So, in a way, 
you know, it depends on how you want to, if you want to give some people, if you want to say that the, the, the standards don't apply here, but they apply there and so on and so forth. And that's why people are making the comparison. But I'm not going to say either way that it was the right thing, but it is what it is. Anyway, man. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching. Hope it made some sense. I hope this video made a little bit of sense. It was rushed, but there you go. Is there anything else we can see here? Sega Kuzmin. Uh, yeah, well, just me and his girl collection and shit. And of course, see you guys later, yo. Oops.